pray that you would guide our thoughts, guide our ambitions, and just guide our lives, Lord, that we would know what you want for us, Lord. As hard as that sometimes seems, that we would really know what you're calling us in our life, in our lives to do, Lord. We love you so much. Bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to remind you guys, if you need anything, please reach out to me. I'll be there. Whatever you guys need, just let me know. I want to serve you guys. Um, but let's jump into our study tonight. I'm kind of excited about this one. Uh, Bob Goff, he just begins his chapter, or part of the chapter, and he says, I think I'd make, I'd make a lousy evangelist. Here's why. I don't want to be an advertisement for Jesus. I'd rather be proof. A recent study concluded that each of us is exposed to at least 5,000 advertisements a day telling us what we want. No wonder we're confused. When you're writing down your ambitions and winnowing the list to what's worth the pursuit, don't worry about whether your dreams seem cool or flashy or religious or evangelical enough. People fall into this trap all the time. Appearances are a house of mirrors. They distort reality. They'll make your ambitions look thinner or fatter or more unreasonable and twisted than they really are. The same is true about appearances. If faith guides you, don't waste your time worrying about what will make you look good or pious or holy. Take action because you're able to and you believe that God is good and all that really matters is that you're His. Simply put, if it matters more what your faith looks like than what it is, it's time to start all over again. Not long ago, I had an ambition to learn how to play the drums. I'd seen a guy on stage at an event and he was sitting behind a huge set of fire engine red drums. He had about a dozen cymbals on stands around him and seemed to be hitting all the drums and cymbals at the same time. It looked like he had three arms. I want to be like that guy for one reason. He looked like a boss. The next weekend, I jumped in my pickup truck, headed to the local music store. They had rooms full of instruments. And I walked into the one where they kept all the drum sets. There were probably a hundred sets of drums displayed on the wall. My head swiveled back and forth like it was on a ball bearing to take in the drum sets for sale. I wanted all of them. It didn't take long for me to zero in on a fire engine red setup on the top row like the ones I had seen earlier. I was going to look like a boss too. Maybe I'd get a new haircut and a tattoo on my face. I wasn't sure, but maybe. I didn't say a word to the salesman as he, as he walked up. I just stood there pointing at the red drums. We both knew what I meant. We also both knew that I'm too old and cool. I'm too old to be cool and couldn't pull it off if I wanted to. The earlier version of me would have thrown my credit card on the counter anyway and started loading the drums into the back of my truck. But standing in the store, I realized something was changing about the way I was pursuing my ambitions. I walked out of the music store that day with a $6 set of drumsticks. Do you know why? Instead of looking like a boss, I decided I wanted to play like a boss. I was going to take a lot of lessons and hard work. So I decided to take a small first step. The same will be true of your worthwhile ambitions. If we're going to get serious about pursuing them, we need to stop caring about what our lives look like to everyone else and instead care about what they actually are. If you come over to my house now, you'll see I have pots and pans set up in the living room. They're not much to look at to most people, but they look fire engine red to me. Don't allow different obstacles in your life that you encounter to throw you off your scent. I have a friend named Al who wanted to be a philanthropist. The problem was he didn't have any money. He could have bailed on his ambition, but he's not that kind of person and you aren't either. To advance his ambition to give away money, he wrote a terrific book called The Boy, the Kite, and the Wind. It's a beautiful story and every copy sold fills the philanthropy fund so he can give more money away. He calls himself the improbable philanthropist these days. Indeed, Al, improbable, perhaps. Effective, totally. His life inspired thousands to lead more generous and engaged lives, and I'm one of them. As I look back at my life, it seems I usually get some of the things I wanted and an equal number of things I didn't want. Some of my ambitions were easy to achieve and others weren't. I haven't installed a circuit breaker to shut down the improbable ambitions when the results of my efforts have looked uncertain. Instead, I give myself license to pursue all the available opportunities I can find. The nature of my ambitions has changed as well. It's not material things, like a set of drums I want these days, it's relationships, building schools in other countries, and with the spirit of kindness, engaging people I find difficult to get along with. As you marshal your ambitions, don't rush the process. Take as long as you need. For some, this is an hour. For others, it could take a month. Do it at your pace. Some people get clarity on their ambitions, waiting in the drive through line. Others go on a weekend retreat. Do whatever works for you, whatever helps you populate your collection of desires that are true and lasting. Find ambitions that will positively impact the lives of others and get you fired up to pursue a few more ambitions for yourself. If you're going to spend your time, talent, and treasure to get some of those dreams off the ground, isn't it worth investment of time and conviction to find the right ones? 
It's fun to sit and daydream, but if that's all we do, we're not really on the path to accomplishing anything. Like I said earlier, when you get all the leaves in one place and start sorting through them, you're going to find the stands out. Do the deep work in your life so the right ones catch your eye. I promise you're going to like what you see. I love what Bob shared about wanting this drum set, but going in and ending up getting the drum sticks and realizing that there was a lot of work to be put in uh, before it even mattered what kind of drum set that he had. And it kind of reminded me of this verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 43. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, the first thing that kind of pops out to me is that it says each tree is known by its own fruit. You're not going to be known by the fruit that someone else produces. So just like Bob said that we often look at, you know, our faith and what we want it to look like to others. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what someone else's life looks like. It matters what your life looks like. And it matters what fruit are you producing. And then it goes to the next part and it says, Figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes picked from a bramble bush. All that to say is you can't get an orange off an apple tree. And I think sometimes in our life, we try and bear this certain fruit that we think others value more instead of being really the person that God has made us to be. Maybe you're an apple tree, and by you just trying to set up these ambitions and goals in your life to produce oranges, it's just not going to work out. Um, you are the person that God made you to be, and you're unique, and it may be different than someone else's tree or fruit that they're producing, but the point is that you need to bear the fruit that God has created you to bear. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, that's where we get the strength and the power to you know, bear this fruit, to do good works. And then I love verse 45. It says, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. All that to say is whatever the things are that comes out of your mouth, that's indicative and, and it shows what's really in your heart. Um, you know, if, if your mouth and speech is just full of tearing others down and being negative, that means you have negative in your heart. If you're just cursing all the time and just kind of talk flippantly about others in your, in your situation, or maybe you're just the person that's always complaining and nagging about what's going on, that means that's what's in your heart. And all of us are in need of a heart transplant. To be honest with you, we need God to come in and change our heart, change our values, change our desires, and change, um, really, really change us. And it's out of the abundance the heart speaks. we got to change that abundance in our heart. And the only way we can do that is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Taking hold of, taking hold of your life and by you surrendering to that power. And, and that every day you would wake up and ask God to lead and run your life. And that it wouldn't be what you want, but it would be what he wants for you. And kind of a step in that is just like Bob, willing to put in the work. It's willing to like take time out of your day to sit down and read the word. It's willing to pray for other people. And it's willing to be who God has made you to be and not just trying to become like someone else. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that you desire to change our hearts. That it's not just about us and what we want, but it's about what you want for us, Lord. So reveal, reveal those ambitions. Reveal those desires that are of you and not ourselves, Lord. Because we want to be the right tree, Lord. Um, if you call us to be an apple tree, help us produce apples, not oranges, Lord. Uh, so we love you and we thank you so much. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen.